Cardia tu Akanao. Listening to the waves gently drifting across the sand of the beach, sooth the mind, the sail garon, as he sat cross-legged in the golden land. His eyes were closed, wind rushed past his ears, and he carried his spirit across the air, free of his body, absorbing the moment. He could smell the salt and the heat and the warmth radiated from head to toe. He had decided that there was no perfection on earth long ago, but this was certainly as close as one could get. It was a moment of peace and tranquility, conveyed to him by the gods. He would give them thanks for their kindness, for a time to sit between the land of sand and rock and of the sea. The birds languidly drifted above, carried on warm breezes, calling to each other. They gazed upon each realm in search of food. Sail sat back, his bare torso leaving an impression in the ground, and opened his eyes. He peered into entrancing azure skies, a soft smile emerging across his lips. The sun was majestic as its rays paused upon all the creatures below, filling them with life. Time was not master here. His watch was sat, unwound, in the hut, unused in days, or perhaps weeks, a pointless accoutrement of the temporary life he had led. Now he was only bound by his whims and the call of his love. He was well provided for here. The ocean was his friend, and the bounty of fish sustained him most agreeably. The waters knew to feed him well, his talents in the sea undoubtedly a gift from his father. He had been cared for, catered for. He had rarely wanted for anything. He was not spoiled nor apathetic. He valued his advantages, the most pristine being knowledge. Of his peers, he wielded the most, and used it with wisdom. But the short time. It was his heart that commanded him, and not the words in his revered books. Elisheva called out to him from the hut. Her voice was strained, a quiet woman with the heart of a lion. She roared to be heard, but here, in this quiet, this peace, she was beginning to know recovery, a restoration of her former self. Sail called out in reply. A smirk formed around every word. She loved that loud, happy song that came from him, an enchanting sound that would send warm pinpricks of pleasure through her spine and bring an unguarded smile to her face. She brushed her hair behind her ears, a feature she had once been so bitter about, and walked down towards the man she loved. Without looking away from the sky, he greeted her with a wide smile and the proffering of his hand. She gave it an affectionate squeeze and sat beside him. For a time, they did not talk. They merely shared the bond between them, the presence of one another, all that was needed. The birds above gave respect to them in muting their calls. Even the gentle ocean bowed in respect, the slow ripples coming to a standstill. Sail could hear the beating of her heart as she watched the rise and fall of his chest. These moments of nothing but them were liquid gold poured into her soul. Creation slowed. Time barely moved. She would etch every detail of every second into her memories. Elisheva bathed in the heady solution of sentiment whenever Sail was away. She would keep reminders to breathe further life into the version that existed in her thoughts. She leaned over and kissed Sail on the cheek and lay across his chest. His hand found her hair and he ran his fingers through the black depths, the softness so alien in his other life. He would miss her. He would miss her feel. The light smell of her skin, the voice that said, I love you, and actually meant it. He thought of his watch for a moment. Time. Time was his enemy. He would not let it invade this moment. They lay on the beach in the sun until they dreamily made love. They ate heartily and then slept. They awoke and shared all the words that had still not been shared in the weeks they were together. They could talk all day, every day and still have another thousand things to share. They could talk until their voices failed them. Yet the quiet was also their friend, and so much could be said with the look alone. Sail did his best to impart his knowledge to Elisheva, and she gave him humanity, feelings he had, before her, never quite understood. She edified him, raising him to a place he never thought possible. They made love once more as the moon hung in the sky, glistening light dancing across the midnight sea. 
They existed together in a moment of passion and ceaseless love. The time together was running short. Then, the morning came that they had both expected. The calm tide ascended to a roar, great waves descending on their small haven. Rains crashed down, lightning beat the landscape with brutality. The birds fled, trees groaned in protest against the winds. The swirling pit of the ocean bellowed. Elisheva wept. She knew he would have to leave. The hut shook violently under the assault, and she stroked Sail's face, unafraid of the storm. She said she understood, like she did every time. She would return here when he wants to emerge from his world, the one his father called the real world. They would explore new places together, and then, as always, they would return here to spend the last of their time together, to forget the separations and boundaries, to forsake difference and embrace their bond. Elisheva watched Sail walk to the water's edge, and further still, immersing himself in the world of oceans and untapped depths of mystery and longing. They both shed tears, invisible or not. She stood there as the storm called. Then the morning came that they had both expected. The calm tide ascended to a roar, great waves descending on their small haven. Rains crashed down, lightning beat the landscape with brutality. The birds fled, Trees groaned in protest against the winds. The swirling pit of the ocean bellowed. Elisheva wept. She knew he would have to leave. The hood shook violently under the assault, and she stroked Sail's face, unafraid of the storm. She said she understood, like she did every time. She would return here when he once emerged from his world. Then, the morning came that they had both expected. The calm tide ascended to a roar, great waves descending on their small haven. Rains crashed down, lightning beat the landscape with brutality. The birds fled, trees groaned in protest against the winds. The swirling pit of the ocean bellowed. Elisheva wept, she knew he would have to leave. The hut shook violently under the assault and she stroked Sail's face, unafraid of the storm. She said she understood, like she did every time. She would return here when he once again emerged from his world, the one his father called the real world. They would explore new places together, and then, as always, they would return here to spend the last of their time together, to forget the separations and boundaries, to forsake difference and embrace their bond. Elisheva watched Sail walk to the water's edge, and further still, immersing him himself in the world of oceans and untapped depths, of mystery and longing. They both shed tears, invisible or not. She stood there as the storm calmed, and the balance of the world was once again restored. He had returned to the realm of his birth, caretaker to the seas, Proteus to his subjects, Sail to his love. And then, Upon the return to his realm, his father would ask him a question, asking why he was so fascinated by Elisheva. What was it that made him love her so? In reply, he turned to his father and said, I do not see colours in her eyes, but fires of feelings that stoke my heart. Each word from her lips echoes of her laughter. The lightest touch is her devotion. In her sadness, always the prospect of a smile. The line of time is now an ocean, and our future is everywhere.